All right, jumping back into P3, we're going to look at quadratic equations, kind of like what we were doing in section 2.1, but in a bit more general context here. Here we'd have what I'd call a quadratic equation because the highest power of x that I see is x squared. In other words, we're just dealing with, you know, numbers, x squareds, x's, and equal signs, and that's about it. That's what makes up a quadratic equation. The first thing you'd want to do when solving a quadratic equation is to get everything on one side. Or in other words, get one side to be zero. So in this case, uh, I prefer a positive leading coefficient, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. You could also subtract x squared and then add 12 to move everything to the left, but I'm going to move everything to the right. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and writing this in standard form, the x squared comes first, then the minus x, because I subtracted x's from both sides, and then the minus 12. Now that everything's on one side, we're going to factor, use the quadratic formula, or even complete the square, you know, finding the h and k. There's a number of options available to us. But for now, I'm going to focus on factoring. One thing I've seen people do when they factor an equation like this is draw out an x and put a and c out here on the left and right hand sides. So in this case, our a not being there, we can assume it's 1 and our c, the constant, is minus 12. Now the idea is, is that the numbers we fill in here should add up to b. The number in top and bottom should add to b minus 1. But we can only put numbers in here that multiply to the same thing as 1 times negative 12. You know, a times c is 1 times minus 12. So that's minus 12. We can only put factors of minus 12 up here. So, for example, in this case, the numbers that work are minus 4 and 3. Because you see, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1, but minus 4 times 3 is minus 12, just like 1 times minus 12 is. So adding, I get the middle number, multiplying down is the same thing as multiplying across. And then what I do with this is I'm going to break up minus x. I'm going to write minus x in a really funny way. I'm going to write it as minus 4x plus 3x. Now, why in the world would I do that? Well, I'll get to that in a second, but let's make sure we've got the same thing 
as the line above. Let's make sure we're still solving the same equation. The x squared and the minus 12 haven't changed, so there's nothing to worry about there. But minus 4x plus 3x, I claim that's the same thing as minus x. And you can see that if you just add these two like terms together. Minus 4x plus 3x is indeed minus x. So we have the same thing as before. We haven't changed anything. We've just written it in a very funny way. Why did we do that? Well, we're going to do what's called factoring by grouping. Look at the first two terms. What could you factor out or pull out of these two terms? What I see in common, this has two x's multiplied together. This has one x in a multiplication. So if I pull out an x, pulling an x out of this, there are two x's here. So pulling one x out leaves me with one x left over. Over here, I've got minus 4x. Pulling an x out leaves me with the minus 4. Now, what do I have in common with these two terms? Well, this one has x, but this one doesn't, so I can't pull an x out. I don't have an x in both terms. But I see 3 and 12, and 3 goes into 12 nicely, so I could pull 3 out. Pulling 3 out of the first term leaves me with x. Pulling a 3 out of minus 12 leaves me with a minus 4. And then, now, it's going to leave me some room for a bit of an explanation in the middle here. Now, all I have to do is my two terms are this and this. x times x minus 4, and my other term is 3 times x minus 4. Well, there's an x minus 4 on both of these. So if I pull x minus 4 out, I'm left with Pulling x minus 4 out of here leaves me with an x. Pulling x minus 4 out of the second term, all I'm left with is the 3. We've just factored this quadratic. And if you're factoring, the next step that you want to do is set each factor, set each thing in parentheses, equal to 0. Because, as, as I've said before, whenever you're multiplying two numbers together and the result is zero, one of the factors has to be zero. So x minus four has to be zero, or x plus three has to be zero. So we have either x minus four being equal to 0, or we have x plus 3 being equal to 0. So on the first one I add 4 to both sides and get that x equals 4. In the second equation I subtract 3 from both sides and get that x equals minus 3. So I have two solutions for this quadratic. I have the solution x equals 4 and the solution x equals minus 3. And since I'm lazy, I'll just list them out, 4 minus 3. And those are the two solutions for this quadratic.